What's up guys, Matt with MotoWorks here. And if you read the description, that's what we're doing today. Adjusting a chain on a BMW G310R. Alright, now before we start, I'd like to just go over a few of the words I'm going to be using today so that when I reference it, you're, uh, you're, you're on the same page as I am. Uh, this is the axle nut. This back here is the adjusting block right here. It's the adjusting block. This is the adjusting bolt and the adjusting bolt lock nut. These lines right here that are on the swing arm are the uh, hash marks or alignment marks. This line here on the adjusting block is what is your alignment hash mark on your adjusting block. This is loaded suspension. And this is unloaded suspension. All right, now that we've cleared up that stuff, let's go over the tools we're gonna need for this job. All right, guys, tool we're gonna be using today is a 27 millimeter socket, a ratchet, and two 13 millimeter wrenches. Uh, we're also going to use a ruler just so we can measure the chain. Um, and I pre-marked the minimum and the maximum chain slack on this ruler so it's going to be easier for you guys to see. Um, in the event you don't have these tools on hand uh, and you do have the factory toolkit, BMW does supply you with all the tools you need to do this. So it comes with two 13 millimeter wrenches, it comes with a wrench which would be a 27 millimeter wrench and then this little bar that you put on here in the event you need a little bit of extra leverage. That is something that BMW does provide in the toolkit. I'll just be using these tools. Um, just figure I'd put that out there to show you that these are also uh, with the bike. So you can perform a chain adjustment if you have the factory toolkit. All right, so when I showed you guys unloaded, I had it on its side stand because most of the time that's how you're going to unload the bike. And all we're doing is we're just unloading the suspension. That's what that stands for. <clears throat> Another way you can do it is if you have a motorcycle stand or some type of secure front wheel chalk, something that holds the front wheel securely in place, you can unload the suspension this way where you just jack the bike up and get all the load off of the shock. That's all that means to unload the suspension. That's when you can actually check your tension. <clears throat> now, before you adjust your chain, the very first thing you wanna do is warm the chain up. Now, since I have a lift, I have a stand, what I am going to do is just run the bike, put it in gear, and just let that chain get warm. All right, we'll come back when that chain's all warmed up. All right, now is the time when we wanna actually check our chain tension. And the place we check our chain tension is somewhere in between this side of the chain and this part of the chain here. We wanna go somewhere to the middle and we just wanna lift up and down and check our chain tension. One of the reasons why we warm the chain up is it moves freer and sometimes you'll get a quarter of an inch more free play just from warming the chain up. So that's why I always tell people to warm the chain up. It's also a good time to put chain lube on your chain when your chain's nice and warm. So before you do the adjustment, go ahead and lube the chain as well. It's also gonna give you a lot freer movement and sometimes it might give you uh, a slightly more um, distance up and down. So chain tension might change a little bit with lube on there. So now what we're checking for on our chain tension is what's called a tight spot. So we're gonna check the tension here. We're gonna rotate that wheel about 180. We're gonna check our tension again. We're gonna rotate the wheel around. We're gonna check our tension again. And what we're feeling for 
is a tighter spot in the chain than in the rest of the chain. All right, and if we actually have one, which it feels like we might on this bike, if we actually have a tighter spot on the chain, that's where we wanna make our chain adjustment at. So there the chain moves quite a bit, but if we come back to here, the chain moves a little bit less than there. So this is our tightest spot on the chain. So this is where we actually wanna set our chain tension at. So to check the chain tension, I just pull out my ruler. Again, the uh, spec, if you look right here, is 40 to 50 millimeters. Uh, translated into inches is about 1.6 inches or two, between 1.6 and two inches of free play. The way I've always checked chain tension is from the top here, up at the top, to the top here, at the bottom here, between here and here, is how I've always checked tension. So the top is, a, is level with the top of our ruler, and then the bottom is almost level with the lower of the settings, the uh, tighter of the settings, if you will. Now when I set chain tension, I always like to go to the tighter setting because uh, then it has room to stretch, so I don't have to tighten my chain as frequently. So this chain here, from measuring it, looks like we need to loosen our adjusting nut bolts a little bit. All right, now to get the proper chain tension, the first thing we need to do is loosen our axle nut, and that is just the standard lefty-loosey thread. So we'll loosen that, not too much, but enough that we can... Uh, slide this adjusting block forward and backward. When you loosen and tighten the axle nut, it moves quite a bit. So as you can see, your measurement will, will throw itself off as you tighten down. It'll look like it's farther away than it is. Just know that this whole unit is spinning because it's not really in a fixed location and you have quite a bit of a gap on the top here and then on the bottom there where this slots into. So when you're checking it, you wanna make sure that this is as square as it can be. And I've heard of people putting shims underneath or in between this block and where it mounts in the swing arm to keep that straight. But as long as you keep this nice and square when you're doing your adjustment, you should be fine. Just know that when you tighten that back down, it's going to look like your adjustment is off. But I assure you, as long as you make sure you make your adjustment with this block nice and uh, parallel to the swing arm itself, or parallel to these hash marks as you can get it, then it should be just fine. Just a word of caution and something that you're gonna notice when you're loosening and tightening, tightening this down. Then we will come over here to the adjusting bolt and lock nut. And we'll lefty loosey the lock nut. Now since we measured the chain and found it was too tight, what we need to do is actually turn this bolt in. By turning this bolt in, as you can see here, I'm turning the bolt in. Let me see if I can back it out a little bit for you. So if I turn the bolt out, it tensions the chain. If I turn the bolt in, it relieves tension on the chain. So as I'm doing that, what I want to be doing is checking my chain tension again against my ruler. Now just a little bit almost got us within the spec. So I'm going to loosen this just a little bit more and we'll check it again. Again, push up, pull down, push up, pull down. All right, that is within our chain spec. Now what we need to do is come over here and look at where the mark on the adjusting block is in relation to the mark on the swing arm. All right, and what we're going to do, since we did not move this that much, we're just going to count the number of hash marks. So one, two, three, four, five, 
six. So that's almost sitting right in the middle of the sixth hash mark. What we need to do now is go over to the other side and make sure that the adjusting block on the other side is at the middle of that sixth hash mark. And if we count, we have one, two, three, four, five, six. And if you notice, it's slightly back. So all we wanna do is loosen this lock nut, loosen the adjusting bolt, and get that to about the middle point on that sixth hash mark. Now what you might notice is when I loosen that, that didn't move at all. So all we have to do is just take our hand and tap on the rear wheel. Loosen this a little bit more. Tap again. And again, we're not loosening a lot, we're just loosening enough. Tap a little bit more, and then if we look, now that we've done that, we can see that now we are on the one, two, three, four, five, six, and a right in a half of that sixth hash mark. All right, we're gonna go over, verify it's the same on the other side. All right, so now we're on the other side. We are at the sixth. We count one, two, three, four, five, six, and about halfway on that. There, with the hash mark here. All right, so these are equal. Now it's very important that you have these adjusting blocks equal on either side. Uh, when you do have those equal, the chain is riding center on the sprocket here and centered on the sprocket up there. The more centered you can get this chain on the sprocket, the longer that chain life is going to be, as long as you're keeping your chain adjusted to the proper adjustment. Um, that chain should last a long time if you're adjusting and making sure everything's nice and straight on your adjusting blocks. We're gonna do a final check of our chain tension. Again, we wanna make sure our suspension is unloaded, and I know it is because I have the wheel off the ground. Again, if you don't have a nice wheel stand, the si side stand is perfectly fine. But we're just gonna pull up, We'll pull down, or push up, pull down, up, and then down. And then what we'll do is we'll rotate the wheel, and we'll check it in other spots, up, and then down. What we want to make sure is that it's not crazy loose in any spot. If we find that it is, then it might be time to replace the chain, but it should be relatively close throughout the... Uh, chain the entire chain should be pretty close up and then down this one looks good we can then tighten this down and the torque on this is 74 foot pounds i'll have a torque spec Just make sure that these bolts are resting against, you don't gotta go crazy, but make sure they're resting against the adjuster block. And then we wanna grab our other wrench, and we wanna hold this one in place while we tighten the lock nut. Now the lock nut doesn't get tightened to a crazy tightness, I think it's nine to 13 foot pounds or something but just wanna make sure it's tight and then it's not going anywhere. We're gonna go over to the other side, do the same exact thing. All right guys, so the chain adjustment on this bike is a fairly simple job and I believe they made it a fairly simple job because it is something that you yourself, the rider, should be able to do on your motorcycle. Um, and they're so confident that you guys should be able to do it that they actually gave you a toolkit with the tools 
uh, so that you can do your own chain adjustment. After you do your chain adjustment and you get it set properly, come down and check it and see what it feels like. All right, you, I mean, just get a rag or whatever if you don't wanna get your hands dirty. But check your chain, see what it feels like with a proper chain adjustment. So that way, before you go on a ride, you could feel your chain and see if it feels close to that. If it feels a little looser, then it might be time for a chain adjustment. But now that you know what it's supposed to feel like, it should be a lot easier to spot your chain when it needs adjusted. That's gonna do it for this video, guys. Again, as always, a thumbs up if you liked the video. Drop any comments you'd like below. I'm Matt, this is MotorWorks. Thank you guys for subscribing to the channel. We'll see you in the next video. Thank you.